everyone, it's Maddie. Today we're going to take a journey into the past. A couple months ago, back into 2014. It's really hard to believe that it's already almost March of 2015. It's kind of insane. These past two months have flown by and that means I'm almost done with my freshman year of high school, meaning I'm soon to be a sophomore, meaning I'm this much closer to college. Today we're going to be discussing my favorite books of 2014. And I'm very excited to share them all with you because I read some very great books in 2014. First, I would like to share with you my favorite short story of 2014, Midnight's. Wow, this is dusty. <laughs> Midnight's from My True Love Gave to Me, and Midnight's is a short story by Rainbow Rowell. This book was okay. There were certain stories in it that I fell head over heels in love with, like the stories by Gail Foreman, Stephanie Perkins, Matt Delapina, and specifically Rainbow Rowell. But there were others I was meh about, and I wasn't really a fan of them, but I thoroughly enjoyed those several short stories in there that I mentioned, and Rainbow Rowell's was especially adorable. Now, this book would have made it into my top books if it had not been a reread. The top reread of 2014, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief by Rick Riordan. I read this way back in 2010. So I read Percy Jackson way back in 2010 when I was in fourth grade and I loved it because I was the same age as him. I was like, yes, a kid my age is kicking butt and taking names. I can do this. Percy Jackson is a wonderful tale about a boy named Percy Jackson who finds out he's a demigod and he can control water. There's been two movie adaptations of it, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief and Percy Jackson and the Sea of Monsters. Both were terrible. And don't watch them if you want a good idea of what what Percy Jackson is about, just go read the books because they're easy and they're middle grade novels. So if you're an adult or if you're a teenager, an adolescent, even if you're still a child, it'll be easy to read because it's an easy to read book. It's just, you fly through it. So now we are going on to the top books. <laughs> The Girl of Fire and Thorns trilogy by Ray Carson. The first book is The Girl of Fire and Thorns and the Crown of Embers, and the third book is The Bitter Kingdom. I read all three of these in succession to each other back in the summer. I thoroughly enjoyed them. They're about a girl who has a gemstone in her belly button, and that means she's destined for greatness. There's magic. I give the first book a four out of five stars. I give the second one a 4.5 out of five stars, and I give the last one a five out of five stars. They were incredible, great, great fantasy series. I was on a fantasy kick during the summer. Cinder and Scarlet by Marissa Meyer. Don't have Scarlet with me, but you can pretend it's here. I love this series. I actually finished Cress earlier in the beginning of this year, of 2015. It was phenomenal. This series just continues to get better with each book. I think I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. I gave Scarlet a 4.5 out of 5 stars, and I gave Cress a 5 out of 5 stars. They're just getting progressively better. Barrist by Marissa Meyer, which is a story about the villain, just came out in the beginning of this year, so I need to read that and wait for winter to come out in the fall. <laughs> Ruby Red by Kirsten Gear. She is actually a German author. I think this was translated to English from German. I read this at the very end of 2014. I wasn't expecting to like it that much, but I really did. It's about a girl who grew up in a family where there's a time traveling gene, but she thinks that her cousin is going to have this time traveling gene, but she ends up getting it. The characters are wonderful, and I still have yet to read the other two, Sapphire Blue and Emerald Green, but I'm sure they are equally as fabulous as Ruby Red. Ooh, there's also a movie of this, and I think it's in German, so I'd have to watch it with subtitles. <laughs> Of Breakable Things by A. Lyndon Rowland. I was sent this for review. I absolutely adored it. I thought it was a wonderful book and doesn't have enough hype around it. It's about a girl with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which I have not heard of until I read this book, but it's a real thing. It's been a long time since I've read this book, but I believe it's when your immune system is really weak and you bruise very easily and you cut very easily, and this girl unfortunately dies. But when she dies, she goes into this ghost world. The way A. Lyndon Rowland developed it and created it and made it unique was amazing. I've never read such a great ghost book before. I've read books about the afterworld before, but it's never been this good. The writing style in this is beautiful. It sort of reminds me of a mix between Marcus Zusak and Rainbow Rowell. <laughs> Something Strange and Deadly by Susan Dennard. This was the Bookbusters book of the month. We unfortunately couldn't have a live show on it because a bunch of us were sick and only Katie could do the live show. She tried to do the live show and I think she has 30 minutes of it where she's answering questions about the book and talking about her feelings on that. So I'll link that down below if you wanna go watch that because Katie's fabulous. Something Strange and Deadly reminded me a lot of Clockwork Angel. If you've read Clockwork Angel, there are automatons that are attacking people and in this, it is the undead that are attacking people. And of course, they're being controlled by an evil man mastermind and you don't know who this evil mastermind is until the end of this book and it's a jaw dropper. This book was great. <laughs> Nil by Lynn Mao. 
Nil by Lynn Matson. I read this back in May. I gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It is about a girl who's in the Target parking lot and one day it gets really hot and something comes straight at her and she wakes up naked on an island in the middle of nowhere and they call it Nil and it's a place where you have 365 days to get off the island or you die. It's a great action-packed novel. I think you would categorize this as a sci-fi book and it's a different sci-fi book. I really enjoyed the take on the mysterious island that nobody knows where it is. Sort of like the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> Thousand Pieces of You by Claudia Gray. I don't have the like finished copy of this book because I got an ARC at RT Book Lovers Convention back in May. I was so excited when I got this book just because the cover of the finished copy is gorgeous. And second of all, it's about dimension travel. I don't think I've ever read a book about dimension travel up until this book. I'm sure there are others out there, but the way this one was handled was so awesome. All of the dimensions were wonderful and carefully thought out and planned and they were just beautiful. I could see them. <laughs> Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo. This was my first dive into full-on high fantasy books. I'd never read a full high fantasy book prior to reading Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo. It was a wonderful way to usher myself into this world because most high fantasy books are in third person, which I don't, I don't really like third person that much, but this was in first person and I got to see everything unfolding through this character's eyes and it was great. And there's even a map inside. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Books with maps on the inside are really cool. They're mainly just high fantasy books that have the map inside. I'm writing a book right now and to visualize the coffee shop where most of it is set in, I drew out a diagram of the coffee shop. So I'm thinking if this ever gets published, I could put a map of the coffee shop in the front cover and like trip people up. Be like, no, it's not a fantasy book. This is how I envision the coffee shop. So envision it this way too. <laughs> Fire and Flood by Victoria Scott. Y'all, first of all, Victoria Scott is a fabulous person. I got to meet her at RT Book Lovers Convention. And she was so sweet and just wonderful and great to talk to. And she just had a little baby. Her baby's so cute. Everyone says it's very similar to The Hunger Games, but I would disagree. The Hunger Games forces kids to kill each other. Nobody kills each other in these books. They're not being forced to. They could kill each other if they wanted to, but that would be kind of sick. But there are some sick contestants in this. And this was one of those books, again, where I wish we had more because it was really, really short. I think it could lend itself to a longer novel, but the sequel comes out in like a week. I was supposed to get an arc of it, but it keeps getting lost in the mail. <sighs> Darn postal system! Even if I don't get an arc, I'm going to be buying the sequel, even though there was a cover change. I'm not that big of a fan of the cover change. I wish they would have kept to this, the minimalism style because I like this more. <laughs> The Naturals by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This book is like Criminal Minds, but in novel form. I haven't talked about my love for Criminal Minds in a video before. It's all over Twitter. Go check out our Twitter and you'll see it. I'm obsessed with Criminal Minds. I've been binge watching it for a little while now. I'm almost on season seven, I wanna say, and there's 10 seasons. And I have a slight obsession, not a slight, a huge obsession with Dr. Spencer Reed because he's a genius, he's hilarious, and also he's pretty cute. I'll leave a picture here because yeah, yeah, he's really cute. And it's basically Criminal Minds for young adults and in book form. And it's so good and the sequel just came out and also, again, one of those books where I just wanted more. Thankfully, because it was really short, I read it in a day. I had to do other stuff so I couldn't read it in one sitting but I wanted to read it in one sitting because it was just that good. It was gripping and there's a thing at the end that you do not see coming. <laughs> Better Off Friends by Elizabeth Yulberg. This book gives me the warm fuzzies. Oh my god, I love this book so much. I have really discovered a love for romantic, fluffy, young adult fiction this year. Contemporary fluff is a really good thing. This was one of those really cute romance books that I just flew through. I read it in one sitting, about four hours. Again, one of those books where I wanted more. I like short books, apparently. <laughs> Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. Again, five out of five stars. This is my number three book on my list. So we're getting down to the top, the real, real top books. Anna and the French Kiss was adorable. Much of what I said for Better Off Friends, I agree with this. It wasn't totally centered around the romance. We have our adjusting to life in high school in Paris and we get to see everything about Paris and it's so well detailed. And there's Etienne St. Clair. Etienne St. Clair is fabulous. I know a lot of girls and a lot of people who read Young Adult really would love to star in an adaptation of these books, but of course they keep choosing Shailene Woodley, Chloe Grace Moretz, probably Jennifer Lawrence for more. They like to cast people several, several times over, but I would like to see some unknowns in some films, meaning that if they ever made Anna and the French Kiss into a film, I would be the first person in line auditioning for Anna because I would love to play her. She's so real and funny and Paris and Etienne St. Clair. <laughs> The 
Vampire Academy series by Rochelle Mead. I have only read Vampire Academy and Frostbite, and I did not think I was going to like these books very much because I tried to read Vampire Academy way back when, probably in fifth grade, and these books aren't really suitable for my fifth grade self. They're much more suitable for my ninth grade self. I devoured these books. They were witty and smart and just fabulous, and the vampire aspect of it kicks butt. Rose is an awesome main character. Just everything about these is wonderful. I loved them. Contrary to popular opinion, I really liked the Vampire Academy movie. I wish they would make Frostbite. The only thing I didn't like about the Vampire Academy movie was the guy who played Dimitri. I mean, I liked him, like, build physically. I, I saw him, but his accent was really, really thick, and I think if he would have toned it down just a bit, we would have been able to understand his lines. Because he had such a heavy Russian accent, we couldn't understand what he was saying. This helped me discover that I love boarding school books, and I cannot wait to read more of this series. I have gift cards, and I'm gonna buy the rest of them. Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I was entranced by this. I couldn't stop reading it. I went to my sister's soccer game. My family was all laying around a blanket eating like a little picnic lunch before the game. I ate my lunch and then I laid out in the sun and I was reading. It was cold outside. So I was wearing a sweatshirt, but I had shorts on because it was like mildly hot slash cold. It was weird. My weather's weird. It was like cold in the morning, but I figured it would warm up. And so I brought a sweatshirt, but I wore shorts. It, I, don't, I don't know. The next morning I woke up and I had red hot hot burns on the back of my thighs because I've been laying in the sun reading this book for so long. It was so good though. I've never read a book so unique. The writing style in this sort of reminded me of Cassandra Clare's, but Cassandra Clare gets really wrapped up in description sometimes. Sometimes it never ends. But in this, Lainey Taylor knows when to just give us enough show and then when to pull it back a little bit. And that's what I loved. And I loved the main character. All of it. So good. Those are my favorite books of 2014. If you had any books similar, leave them down in the comments. I would love to discuss all the feels with you. If you have books that are different, that were your top books of 14, leave them down below. I would really love to know. I want to discover new books. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I'm Maddie. I'll see you next time. Bye!